What's up, YouTube? Uh, happy holidays. Hope you've had a great Thanksgiving. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Not sure when this video is coming out, but I'm just going to wrap all that up and throw it at you right there. So it's the end of the year, right? We've got a lot of cell phones that have come out this year. We've had a lot of great devices. Um, I was lucky and fortunate enough to pick up a brand new Galaxy Z Fold 4. Um, and I love foldables. If you don't know that already, I absolutely love foldables. So today we're going to get in and talk about my experience with this, what it's been like to live with this for a month, and um, just kind of do a quick review over it. Of course, like all the other videos, a camera review, separate video for that will be coming later. So let's jump right into it. So today, before we get started talking about the biggest and best foldable out there right now in the US, um, before I get into this video, I have to try to remember to do this every time, but please like this video if you want to see more content like this, whether it's me or other people talking about the Z Fold 4, maybe you're thinking about it, wondering about tips and tricks, all that kind of stuff like this video to help the algorithm helps me out costs you nothing and then if you really enjoy this video you want to see more of kind of my take on on living with devices for a few months or a month or a year i typically do longer reviews because or well yeah i do longer reviews but i live with my device at least a month or longer before i actually review and talk about it so today we're going to get into the z fold 4 but hit that subscribe button and let's go so if you don't already know, I have a Z Fold 3. So this is kind of a comparison video between those two versus some of the other devices I've used, that sort of thing. So first things first, let's talk about design. That's what we always want to get into. And quite frankly, I played with a Z Fold 3 for a long, long time before I really committed to that device. The form factor is a little different. It's not your typical candy bar slab shaped phone. This is a lot skinnier, a lot thinner, more narrow, a little bit taller than like we're used to. I felt the same way about the Z Fold 3 and the Z Fold 4 does get a little bit wider, but it still feels very narrow um, compared to a normal size phone. And to me, I like that because as you can see, I feel like I'm gripping this a lot better. It feels more conventional to hold in the hand. Also, when you're taking pictures and stuff, it seems to be more like holding a point and shoot camera versus trying to hold a big behemoth of a phone like this. This, this gets a little, as you can see, it gets a little more tricky. So designed for me, folded, I really, really like. Um, yes, this front screen does suffer a little bit from being a little more crammed together. So that means everything is a little smaller, um, including your keyboard. But um, I'll, I will tell you, I haven't had a big, big issue with it. Um, so let's open this up and let's talk about that inner display, which is really why you're probably getting this. Um, Having a physical fingerprint reader as you see me use is great. I like the button placements. I like where everything's at on that. I can't complain there, you know. And then of course you always have flex mode. You can put this into flex mode when it's open. Um, another reason why I got it, why I love it. It's just great for productivity. So both displays are fantastic. They're, they're still as great as they were last year off of a Fold 3. I don't think they're a big upgrade over that, but this one is a little bit more conventional. It got a little wider, it's a little less tall, that sort of thing. Um, do I think you notice a big deal or a big difference between them? Not really. I haven't, it, it just feels like the main big upgrade between the two as far as design goes is really and truthfully, this phone kind of feels a little more solid. So if you liked your Fold 3 or you like the Fold 3, this is going to feel just as good, if not maybe a little bit better. It feels a little more solid, a little more well-built. It's a little square, a little flatter on the sides. You get the picture. The width, the weight, all this stuff that people talk about being huge differences and everything, I can't tell a difference. But the next thing I wanna talk about is performance. And to me, this is really where the upgrade kicks in. So last year we know that we had um, 
a little bit more inferior chipset than we have this year. And I'll be honest with you, after using the Flip 4 that I had with that 8 Plus Gen 1 chip in it, I knew immediately that the Fold 4 would be an outstanding device just off that chipset alone. So we didn't get a bigger battery, but we did get that way more efficient chipset. And people are sleeping on how good that chip is. I can tell that this device is faster. Multitasking is faster, loading is faster. Um, the, the camera, even the camera software seems better. There's just so much about it. And then the ability to have the same battery, but get better battery life just off of how good that chipset is. On top of that, the thermals are hands down the best of any device out there. I have yet to be able to get this phone to heat up and get hot. And that alone to me is worth the upgrade over the Fold 3 and why I got this device. This thing is buttery smooth. When I close something out and I go to something else and I'm jumping around, I want it to be fast. And that's, that's what I use this device for. This is my fast work device. It's a work powerhouse. So moving from performance, let's talk about some of the niche little things that you can really do with this. We'll talk about cameras and then we'll finish up with, do I really recommend this device? You have this flex mode and for me, this is probably the biggest reason why I really love a folding device is being able to set this down and not have to hold it, but still be able to use it. Using this in, in this shape and this form factor is really the key to enjoying this device with great speakers, a great screen, um, and just the ease and use of throwing things into uh, multi-screen that niche ability to do this when no other phone can. Um, the fact that we now have Android 12 L, which, which makes this look a lot like a small little laptop, which gives you kind of your little taskbar look at the bottom, and then you just can grab those apps and move them around and have multi-window support is just really, really nice. Um, and so those are some niche things that this does. When you combine that with this inner screen, will let you use the S Pen, makes it even better. With that being said, the last little thing we'll wrap up and we'll talk about these cameras. Well, I hear a lot of people talk about, oh man, they don't have 108 megapixel this and 50 megapixels is okay, but it's not that great or whatever. I don't understand that, that whole dilemma or argument at all because really Samsung, the S22 Ultra is the only phone out there um, that has anything bigger than a 50 megapixel. I mean, Google and Apple just moved to those in the last few years. And, and Apple, this is their first year. Google, this is their second year. I don't get the complaint here because this camera system in this phone is absolutely amazing. It's astounding. The fact that you can actually force it to shoot 50 megapixel pictures is incredible. The stabilization, Samsung's finally worked that out. Their camera uh, software has finally gotten decent and really good to use. And I'm just really impressed with everything I'm seeing coming out of this. I'm seeing great stabilization. I'm seeing great video quality. I'm seeing extremely good and not oversaturated or over sharpened. Um, photography out of here. To me, this is more consistent. It's more dialed in. The software is more utilized for it. And so th therefore it's more consistent. It's more reliable. And I would tell you that after owning a Pixel, after owning several other Samsung devices and owning a pro level iPhone, right now, this is the most consistent shooter that I have. And that's late in 2022. So do I recommend this late in 22? Absolutely. Why would you not, if you're looking to get into a foldable device and you're kind of nervous about getting one, I would probably recommend the Flip 4 over this just for the price. But if you're getting a device that you want to last for a while, if you're not a every year upgrader, every two year upgrader, maybe you're sitting around with an S10 phone or maybe you're sitting around with an older Note phone, um, this is going to be one of those devices that I think this one in particularly over the Fold 3 is the one. I think this 8 Plus Gen 1 chip is fantastic. It's going to hold its ground for a long, long time. I'd say two to three years easy, if not four. Um, this camera system is going to be top notch for a long, long time. Um, 
durability on this it, it just the difference between the crease the way it opens closes the noises the, all that kind of stuff it just feels a lot more solid i'm just just trust me there's no way for me to convey in a video the feeling of the two it's it's just tighter it's more solid um I, I feel like the break-in process has, has been better here and overall I just feel like there's a better quality build here. Um, so with that, this is definitely a great longevity device, this guy. So that's my review of the Z Fold 4 here late in the year. Um, definitely these two are head to head for my phone of the year. So S22 Ultra, Z Fold 4, um, they, those are my, my two, two top phones. I, I'm right now flipping back and forth between them daily. So one will, I'll have my main SIM card one day and I'll take the other one out. I'm going back and forth and now I'm actually started like use one like half the day and then swap it out just to see which one I prefer. It's really close. Um, but you guys will see that video at the end of the year. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.